Hello and welcome to Horrible Science, where this week we're going to be finding out just how gruesome your guts can be. <laughs> oh, mummy. You just got oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're discovering what we eat, why we eat it, and what happens to it after it's been eaten. Uh, Bob? Here's what the average person might eat in a day. Cereal and fruit for breakfast. Sandwiches and juice for lunch. Meat and vegetables for dinner. Apple pie there. Oh, mm. no, oh, no, no. Vegetables mm. are disgusting. Mm. Now, how much do you think you might eat in a year? Around 800 kilograms of food. That's the weight of a small car. Personally, I don't know why you wouldn't just eat the car. Wow. And here is your supermarket bill. Wow. <laughs> OK, yeah, uh, we'll get loose to sort that one out. So I really eat all this in one year. Oh, yes. And as a result, you'll go to the toilet over 2,000 times, producing enough wee to fill six bathtubs. Oh. And 100 kilos of poo, or the weight of an average gorilla. Whoa, 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 Bob, stop. Please tell me you haven't got a gorilla made out of poo under there. You said to make it more visual. Oh, Bob, get it out of here. That's disgusting and amazing, but, but mainly disgusting. Very well. Moving swiftly on. This seems like the perfect time for our first big experiment, the hot dog test. It's so horrible. We're going to see how many hot dogs we can get into the human stomach in 30 seconds. Ready, Bob? Ready. Is that it? It's tiny. I mean, you can't even fit like a double pepperoni pizza in that, even if you fold it. Well, that's true. Luckily, the human stomach can expand. OK, fair enough. And while we're doing that, Professor McTaggart can give us his brain dump on what happens to food after you've eaten it. Ready, Professor? Oh, yes, yes, I am always ready. Have you done something different to your hair? I have literally no idea what you mean. Oh, fair enough. Ready, Bob? Let's go. It's so horrible. I'm Professor McTaggart, and this is my brain dump on how food becomes energy. Once food's been chewed by your teeth, it's propelled down your throat and into your stomach, where it's held in place by two circular muscles known as sphincters. Your stomach's a sort of tank where food is mixed up and made easier to digest. Here, the food's dissolved, squashed, and turned into a creamy liquid before dripping out of your stomach and into your intestines. These are tightly coiled tubes that can be as long as seven meters. It's while traveling through these tubes that the creamy mess that was your dinner has all the nutrients and other things your body needs sucked out. This epic journey can take food as long as four hours, and yes, that does include hot dogs. Greetings, Gorehounds, and welcome to this year's Vicious Veg Eating Competition. I assume everybody's feeling hungry. Let's meet our contestants, Pink Petticoat, Cobra Lily, and Venus Flytrap. Let's declosh. We are underway. Let's meet our first contestant, Pink Petticoat, uh, so-called, because she looks like a pink petticoat. What a technique. She is stuffing little bugs up her petticoat, trapping them, and digesting them. How does it taste, Pinky? Great. All right, go nuts, go wild, go crazy for Cobra Lily. Named, of course, after her snake-like appearance. Dimwit flies are flying into her mouth. Never to return. Uh, yeah. uh, how's it going, fly girl? <laughs> uh, thank you for the insight. Looky here, old Big Mouth strikes again. Uh, this fella just can't keep his trap closed. My favorite and your favorite, Mr. Venus Flytrap. Uh, he ain't up to much yet. Uh, them bugs just resting there on his mouth parts. There we have it, his signature move. We have a winner, folks. Uh, how do you feel, Venus? That hurts. I will save you. I will save you. You're my best buddy, Tim the Plant. Don't worry, little fella. <laughs> Making up your medicine. What in the name of Newton's wig is he doing now? Well, in order to get him back on the show, I said he could play with some poo, and for some reason he went for it. Now, what I'm doing here is well sciencey. I'm making fertiliser the old school way. I'm using one part dry blood, 
one part ground up old bones, and one more part rotten cow dung. <laughs> oh, oh, that stinks. Robot, cover me up. Come of on. course, Professor. Ooh, ooh, even I can smell that, and oh. I have my nose on mute. Oh, uh, sorry about that. I had beans last night. Oh, you mean the fertiliser? Yep. Now, today's show has really taught me something. Well, that's a first. Since I adopted Tim, I've been reading up on plants, and believe me, they've got it tough. They get eaten, they get trodden on, some leaves even get used as toilet paper. Sorry, mate, I didn't want you to have to hear all that. Ah, come in, Professor Small. This is the studio. Did you manage to find any samples? Indeed we did, Bob. Our mission was most successful. Uploading the photographs now. For our mission, we selected a random house on an average street, parents, children, one cat and a dog. But you'd be surprised what else we found living there. <laughs> what is that? Oh, this is a bed bug, which we found in the bedroom, unsurprisingly. <laughs> you can get up to 150,000 living on a double bed. That is a flower mite, invisible to the naked eye. We found it crawling across a bowl of breakfast cereal. Ah, and that one? Oh, this is an itch mite. Lives on the back of cats and dogs, causes no end of bother. Absolutely fascinating. Huh, oh, that's the worst one yet. Where'd you find that? I, d I don't recall. We didn't. We didn't find that in the house, did we? Where did we? Where did we find that one again? Is it Mark's head. Ah, uh, yeah. What? Mark's yeah. head. Yeah, it's a head louse, actually. Their eggs are commonly known as nits, and they live right there in the scalp. Yeah. I mean, I shouldn't worry too much. Nothing good going over with a nit comb won't sort out. <laughs> That'll be what all the scratching is about. I've got monsters living in my, my beautiful hair. This is horrible. What am I going to do? Professor, is that really necessary? Don't even think about it. There are things living on me. What am I going to do? I'm going to end up bald looking like Bob if I'm not careful. Well, don't worry, Mark. It's the same for all living creatures. But most micro-creatures don't mean you any harm. Some are actually vital to keep you healthy. There are minuscule organisms called bacteria, much, much smaller than the tiniest creepy crawly. And the human body is a great place for them to live. Now, Chaz, uh, you and me both know loads about blood, so I thought it'd be great if you and me could do a blood transfusion together. No, I, I don't think that's wise, Mark. I uh, don't think you know enough about so blood. So this woman needs a blood transfusion. And this is our donor. What is this? Don't know everything, do you, Charlie? This is a dog. You, you can't give a human dog's blood. It's totally different to human blood. Yeah, we have to get it from a human. cat. Human, human, human. Yeah, totally, yeah, I knew that. Um, Glenda? OK, this is Glenda. She's a human. She's going to be giving us some blood today. What are you doing? Giving a patient human blood, mate. Try and keep up. No, you can't just give her anyone's blood. It has to be a match, the same blood group. What now? Everybody has slight differences in what makes up their blood. In fact, there are many different types of blood group. You can't just give this woman Glenda's blood unless she's in the same blood group as the patient. Thanks, Glenda. Wow, there's a lot to remember, isn't there? <laughs> I'm starting to think you know absolutely nothing about blood. Well, that's where you're wrong, mate, because I know loads about blood. You thought plasma was a type of TV set. Yeah, mate, I probably even know more than you about blood, but you're the guest on the show, and I didn't want to embarrass you in front of everyone at home watching it on the TV, which for many people will be a plasma. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Charles to everyone. And now, Bob. So here's an interesting thing. Some animals actually feed on the blood of other animals. Uh, and we've got one here. It's a leech. Bob! Bob! Oh. Now, where's that leech got to? Bob! Hmm. Get it away! Get it off me! Wow. That hungry leech is enormous. I can see that, you idiot! Get it off me! Now! There's no need to call me names. What? I don't mean it. It's all just playful bants. <laughs> Please! <laughs> Get this leech away from me! Only if you help me with my first aid badge. Then you have to be nice to me. 
for a whole week. What? Uh, uh, yes, 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 just, just get it off. Little Litchi, <laughs> come to me. Uh, oh, really likes your blood. Oh, oh. oh thank heavens. Oh, you took your time about it, didn't you, you rusting heap of... Uh, I, I mean, uh, thank you, Bob. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> Oh, hey, Prof. How's it going? Ah, Mark, well, there's good news and bad news. The good news is we found out what those teeny tiny bits of cell in your blood are for. They're called platelets. And when you cut yourself, they plug the gap and form a scab, like the one we're in now. Great. And what's...? Bad news? Uh, now your cut is completely scabbed over. We're stuck in your finger. I have completely overcome my squeamishness. And I have a solution. You do? Oh. Thank goodness. <laughs> yes. We will simply cut your finger off. Yeah, you just cut... cut. No! Good what? idea, yes. Don't worry, I can sew it back on and get my first aid badge. No. You're welcome. No! Here we are. Oh, oh. get off me, Bob! Not I helping. I it when you were scared of blood. Don't be such a baby. <sighs> just this little finger off here, I can... Oh! Ah! 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 Oh, oh, my scab's come completely off. Ah. Oh. Oh, that's very... That's gross. Humans are gross. Professor, are you OK? Now the scabs come off, that means that we can just... <laughs> Phew! I got through the show with all ten, nine, eight, seven, six, plus five, eleven, all my fingers. <laughs> Prepare yourself for an insane look at what they don't tell you in the science books. From inner space to the universe, we're on a case to face the worst. It's icky and it's whiffy and it's yucky and it's squishy but we love it.